This MMA rules bout takes place in the minus 84 kilogram middleweight division and will be contested over three five minute rounds. Your referee in charge when the action gets underway, Mr. Ilya Lucic. Introducing to you firstly, fighting out of the blue corner. At just 22 years of age, he stands 189 centimeters tall with a perfect career record so far of three fights with three wins. He's representing Training Academy from Croatia. It's Madin Mikulic. And opposing him on the other side of the cage in the red corner. At age 35, he stands 183 centimeters tall with a professional record of 16 fights with nine wins and seven defeats. Representing Pantera team from Croatia, it's Stanislav Pantera Krofak! And hopes your referee for his final instructions. Three fight Gentlemen, you know the rules. The FNC, fight clean. MMA Listen rules to my commands to at all times. This. Keep yourself protected. Fighting when blue, stop, Marin Makulic. Touch gloves if you want. 22 years of age. Fighting red, Stanislav Krofak at 35. Perhaps the two most important numbers out of all the statistics we've seen so far. We're underway for the first of three. This fight is about game plan, game plan, game plan. Southpaw versus Orthodox. I'm curious if wrestling becomes a factor at any stage. Both guys have struggled in that department. We'll see who goes first. Tentative start, a lot of caution. Krofak trying to get range here. Mikulic looks like he could get very busy early on, but uh, opening gamut from Profac early doors here, puts in a left cross, but searching. And, uh, that left hand very dangerous, Chris. Yeah, a lot of hand fighting here on the outside. We'll have to see if somebody can line up that backhand. So keeping distance, keeping range, just having a look-see, just feeling how hot the water can be. And uh, I don't blame these two because both very capable. Of course, the numbers favor Mikulic, who comes in with that 3 and 0. Oh, and the left hand goes over the top, finds the target. And uh, Krofac needs to keep the hands up, have a care. He's going to continue, or want to continue, that 3 and 0 run here tonight, Mikulic, and uh, protect that record. Krofac, of course, needs a win here after two losses. Yeah, you can see that hand fight. He was able to sneak that left over the top. Nice outside foot position, right straight down the middle. Sometimes Krofak has a tendency to back off, and that's one of the things that we're seeing here get him into trouble, in my view. Yeah, but I think that's a wise choice from Krofak to keep the movement, keep busy, and uh, present a moving target for Mikulic. And uh, he's getting tagged, but I think as long as he can keep moving, he can create openings. But I think that guard's got to come right up. The left hand is the problem here. If he lands that, if he gets it in the crosshairs, well, we could see some very sparky action indeed. Great kick there to the midsection. Starting to liven up, and uh, now they're engaged. That was one of the first questions I had. How soon would we see this? So busy on the wire, using leverage, Krofak. And uh, starting to put a little bit of hench and weight onto Mikulic. Tries to get too much of a sprawl, tries to go for two legs. But uh, Mikulic sees that coming and defends very, very well. Yeah, nice job here from Mikulic to prevent the hands from being clasped. Got an over-under here. He's really digging hard for the right underhook. A little bit tricky, I think, for Krofak, given his position and his posture right now to be able to complete. So out of the two, Chris, where does the better ground game lie? Yeah, great question. I haven't really gauged, I think, in this matchup if anybody has an advantage because I've seen them both struggle with grappling. So it's kind of one of those. Sometimes when you have two guys who you would think on paper are going to strike, that can be the recipe. Absolutely. We thought this was going to be a stand-up affair. 
Um, they've engaged. They're on the wire. Referee's having a word. And uh, getting busy. Trying a little Ashiba eye on the inside to get the sweep moving. Uh, Krofak, uh, Mikulic reading everything that's coming very well. And uh, trying to get the advantage with the both underhooks, which he succeeds eventually. Turns his man on the wire now. Now Mikulic starting to go to work here. And um, I think that uh, Krofak probably regrets letting that right hand with the underhook slip back in, but he reverses that momentum brilliantly. Yeah, it was really nicely done as well. It was almost pure strength. He didn't quite have the underhooks as deep as he would have liked, but you can see just how dogged an effort from Krofak to be able to get this takedown going. But it's just been the fight from the 50-50, again pummeling is Mikulic. This is one of the most unsung and most unadmired positions in MMA is this. Well, look at that, Mikulic, he's the one that gets the two legs and it's down onto the mat. Powers his man, double leg takedown, straight back up. Krofak knows that he does not want to be in that position. But Mikulic is the one here that's driving things. Very, very powerful, very, very energetic from the younger fighter, Mikulic. And he's using that to great advantage here. So listen, the clock has worn away. We've had the time taken, that was sweet. Oh. Little Ashiba I love that sweep. And uh, going to find it tough now to do anything meaningful against the clock. Very nice, though. You pick the ankle. Potentially could expose the back. Nicely done by Mikulic to turn into the fence to prevent that back take on tap. Ten second clap up. And uh, a chance for them to regroup between rounds. Uh, it's been a real, real tough struggle, isn't it, to get an advantage here. And uh, at the end of the first, it's going to be very difficult to score that, Chris. It was such a well-balanced matchup. And uh, although it was an explosive action, a lot of technicality going on there. There was, for sure. And I think we got a lot of data points as to who would try to do what when. And it was actually Krofak that pressed the takedown. The thing is, nothing really meaningful and impactful resulted from that takedown effort. There was a changing of position or two, but no actual meaningful offense. So I'm actually looking at the striking there, and I think actually Krofak had the harder kicks. So I think he actually probably takes that round just, just barely. Very close, very close, very, very difficult close to score. Indeed, yeah, and I think he did come down to the hand exchanges. Uh, we may get a chance to see them just here. And Mikulic lands or doesn't. So a bit of a scramble there. I think Krofak got that left hand across, but uh, Definitely driven there by Mikulic in terms of hunger to get engaged and to try and do something meaningful. But the takedown there, clean and powerful. We go to two. Yeah, in my view, there's actually a left hand that landed for Mikulic. There was only about three or four significant strikes total between the two. So judges will have their mathematics at the narrowest of margins. Well, Mikulic starts to introduce that right hand now right early on in the beginning of the second round. Brings up the high kick, and uh, yeah, you heard the crowd here as that whistled by millimetrically off target, but it just shows the potential that's there. And Profak, for me, needs to get the guard up. I think he's a bit too leisurely with the hands and could get caught, could get surprised. But he's moving the right direction for a southpaw, and uh, again, that big overhand left, a very, very good shot. Full foul of that uh, midsection kick. Hard press here. Krofak driving his shoulders in. It's interesting. I didn't necessarily see him pressing it like this one in this contest, but he must have felt a little bit vulnerable with the speed, perhaps. And being put on the back foot relatively early by Mikulic, it makes sense. So we're back to this power game almost on the wire with Krofak looking and he gets the purchase that he was searching for and maybe now with the time on the clock the opportunity to get to work here just an opportunity to remind you sponsor for this evening sofa sport data sports providing the entertainment for you here tonight at fnc 11 fight for legacy. Well, that's the first rule of MMA. When you're down, you need to get up as soon as possible. And uh, Mikulic 
provided the perfect response there. Oh, we've got a lock on. There's the guillotine. Jump guillotine, drags his man down. Has he got enough crank on there? No! Profac manages to get enough wiggle room to slip out. Yeah, it was close, actually. Interestingly, Krofak was going for a guillotine initially, potentially a go-go choke, and then, actually, after reversing the position, it was Mikulic who was going for something. But he seems to have a heavier half guard. Krofak, again, just proving to be a little bit more physical in these positions. Let's see what he can do here. He seems to settle. Physicality is the name of what's going on here. That's the game here. They're both starting to just become a little bit battle-weary because there's an air. An awful lot of energy being expended just to get control. But now Profac manages to get on top, being held in that open guard position. And uh, Mikulic, we know, works very well off of his back. Yeah, he's definitely got the frame for it. It was a nice regard here. He's got two butterfly hooks in play. He's flat and pretty hard, though. You can just see the forward, relentless pressure of Profac. Attempt to rebuild his base. He did it moments ago. Mikulic again successful up against the fence. Nice, nice. A real physical chess game going on here. Trying to pick the locks, trying to find something to make a difference. Very closely matched this bout. And a uh, huge amount of bravery to go for a single leg there. But then again for the double, down he goes. And Profac does get rewarded for that effort. We've still got a minute and a half left in this second round. So there's still time for something meaningful to happen. And his grappling is really starting to take over here. There's a little bit of annoying ground and pound at times. Obviously, we mentioned that choke attempt that was back and forth between the two of them about a minute and a half ago. Here, here is the golden opportunity. One hook in. I love the instep used there on the left. He's just got to make sure he doesn't get thrown off here. Tripoding up here is Krofak. Excuse me, tripoding up is Mikulic. Krofak, of course, going for the back take. So can he turn his man? Lost the hooks. Unable to do it, but brave effort from Profag. Hugely appreciated by a very technically aware audience here at the arena at Zagreb. But now, Nikolic takes advantage and has his back. He's got the hooks in. He's got an opportunity here, Sensei. That was really lovely. Again, it's just like with the guillotine front headlock sequences that we saw. There's been a back take, there's been a reversal, and then there's been another back take. What an incredibly close matchup we've got here, Chris. I mean, it's in the technicality that's involved, uh, just the subtlety in all of the technical uh, approaches from both fighters. You've got to remember, 22 years of age, plays 35. Now, we're seeing some strikes from the top, so Mikulic starts to maybe take the edge here and get an advantage. Probably not enough to make a huge difference at this stage, but uh, great work from both fighters thus far. So, Close round. Close round indeed. I think that actually might have won him that round because they both had their moments, they both took the back, they both threatened with the front headlock, and for me actually, the most meaningful, impactful, potentially fight ending stuff came at the end of the round there from Mikulic. And yeah, there was a potential fence grab there from Krofak, good spot by the ref. Interesting, and an interesting, very much pure grappling round. So one for the purists, definitely appreciated by a very technically intellectual audience here to uh, be aware of the nuances that are occurring. Here we get a chance to see some of the action on the tail of the tape. A couple of strikes there. While he's got control of the back, Nikolic, nothing meaningful. Still very close to this. Where do you see the numbers? Tough one. I'm going to say it's 19-19, uh, tied up. Wow. So everything to play for going into the third. Our opening bout here in the prelims at FNC 11, Fight for Legacy. It's going to be a cracking night in store. On paper, it's absolutely delicious. But we go to three and we start with a spinning back fist. Krofak has got to be first here. If he wants to press that takedown, he cannot be hesitant. This fight is close. As I say, the wear and tear started to show for me. Ooh, that was a good connection. Halfway through the second round, they're starting to breathe, as you'd imagine. But um, you've got to give some respect to Profac at 35. I mean, that's the number <laughs> that's the most important one here. And, um, you know, I said that 
he's got interests outside of the cage. He runs uh, a construction company and he's also got uh, a modelling interest. Are they too much of a distraction for an elite athlete at this level? Seemingly not, because here he is outperforming against all the odds, against all the numbers, and uh, probably in with a very good shot here to just inch his way ahead over the line against a 3-0 and fighter at 22. Yeah, it's one of the things that we weren't really sure if he'd be able to match the pace, especially if it went deeper into these rounds. We're now here in the third. He had a nice left hand that landed momentarily. Again, throws it. I like his timing on that, too. He's got to make sure he times it when he feels that Mikulic is irrevocably committed in the pocket like that and then throw it. Yeah, and I do think the southpaw stance has caused a problem for Mikulic, but he's finding the target, just gradually working his way in, closing the distance, trying to get inside the pocket to be able to throw the shot to make it work. But actually, Krofak has done a very good job of sorting out distance here and keeping him at range. I agree. Still head hunting for a shot here, trying to get in. And uh, I think it's been frustrating for Mikulic so far because Krofak has, has disguised what has been very good defensive work. And that was a good connection with the kick. That was really important. Again, there's one, like one left hand that's landed for Krofak. A couple of short punches from Mikulic and then a hard body kick a moment ago. This fight, and indeed I think these rounds are going to be decided by very, very, very narrow margins. Love that there from Mikulic. Just squats the stance, threatens the takedown, then throws the right. He's got to throw some volume. It's like one punch occasionally, two. Very much single kind of pot shotting exchanges here in this contest. So there's only one win in four bouts for Krofak. So he comes here as an underdog, if you're going to look at stats, and see if they play a part in how this is going to play out. I think he got maybe tagged by that, so tire <laughs> starting to tire now Krofak has to keep the range has to keep moving on the outside but I think it's starting to take its toll Mikulic is definitely feeling me the fresher fighter here I like it but where is the jab he needs to just be completely spamming that right now hand fight jab or even the left hand to the hook really nice with the hand fight off that he landed it, I think, very, very, very early in the first. Yeah, Chris, you're right. Mikulic is looking lemon fresh. I mean, that was the number that was always going to be important, 22 against 33. But he's game now. Can he make it count? If he can finish strong here, he might do enough to sway the judges. Interesting, it's gone to the ground, but it came straight back up immediately. Uh, we thought that this was going to be a kickboxing stroke boxing affair. No one has really made an effort in this round. That was positively... Uh, a jaw cracker. Uh, no one's made a huge effort to take it to the ground in this round, the third and final. It's still going to be a tough night for the judges on this one, I think. It was a nice trap a moment ago there from Mikulic. You can see that Krofak has been looking for that overhand left a couple of times. Nice jab to the inside. Very lovely. It's a good tactic as well. When you can't parry and come over the top stones, it's good to go in the inside. Yeah, that left hand has been kind of a one-trick pony for Krofak. Uh, you know, you kind of know where it's coming from and you know how to defend it. But he's countered very nicely there, Mikulic. That was straight through the middle and he looks game now, very focused, Mikulic. He's got just over 30 seconds on the clock here in the third and final to try and do something that will separate these two fighters. I don't know if Kofak's got it in the tank or... Well, look at that. Was a very, very near miss. What a great defence. Went under it. Uh, we did see it coming, but... Uh, after three rounds, you could very well be on the receiving end of some shin souffle. Yeah, it came up right at a 45, and he just barely missed it, trying to go for the high crotch. Can he get it here? Seconds left. I feel like it's going to be too little too late. 29-28, Mikulic. Well, there it is. The guru has pulled it. 28-29, Mikulic. It was incredibly close. Uh... Very technical bout for our opening here at the prelim. A lot of nuance on the inside, on the wire. Uh, he looks fairly happy with that performance. Mikulic, but we've seen fighters that look absolutely delighted, only to find <laughs> when they get to the shower room, it's all gone the wrong way. But look, we need to hear what the judges have made of it. Very interesting that uh, 
it did go to the ground, but not in a, in a meaningful way, Prince said. They were back up and back to the boxing. And a lot of it was just such a respectful series of exchanges and almost mirror image exchanges where there was a, a back take from one, a back take from another, a front headlock position for one, and then a reverse, right? And so I think by the end, we saw Miklic growing in confidence, probably also retaining better energy, efficiency over time. That'll have been the difference for me there in the third. Yeah, I think the, the missed opportunity for me, Profac, could have closed the distance and tried to land that left. That was the power shot. That's where he needed to cause the damage. Beautiful, slipsy little Ashiba rise, the trips, single legs, caused the problem on the wire. But he used too much energy keeping his man there and plus three. I think so. So, tense moments here, not only for the fighters, but also uh, the audience and the commentary team will we'll be looking forward to see what the numbers are on this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a big round of applause, please, for both of these athletes after an excellent contest. And at the end of those three completed rounds of action, we go to your judges' scorecards where we have a unanimous decision. All three judges scoring this contest, 29 points to 28 in favor of your winner, Madin Mikulic! Mikulic takes the win. And so your appreciation for our runner-up, called it. Bang on. And uh, well, a tough, tough night in the office for Mikulic, but he manages to pull it off. That's four in a row against the tough opponent and uh, well, everything on a plate. Yeah, I think so. And it definitely came down to very, very, very small plays. And in my view, the immediate impact scored in some of the striking and very little resulting from the takedown efforts. We're gonna go and have a quick word with the winner. Marine, čestitam na teškoj izborenoj pobjedi, no znao si da te čeka težo zadatak protiv iskustne pantere, čovjek koji je gatekeeper, praktički koji je FNC-u, na kraju se pokazalo 1-1 u rundama prije treće, ali si izvukao, čestitam. Hvala puno. Znao sam da će biti teška borba, malo sam razočaran, jer sam mislio da sam malo više bolji nego što sam sad pokazao, ali svakako jedno je veliko iskustvo. Drago mi je što smo u Areni Zagreb, to je ono, nekakav neopisljiv osjećaj meni. Došli su mi ljudi da mi je neko rekao da će se ovo događat prije pet godina. Rekao bi mu vjerojatno da je lud. Hvala svima. Marine, s čim te Stanislav iznenadio? Rekao si da si mislio da si bolji nek što jesi, a vjerojatno je on možda bolji nek što si ti očekivao. S čim te iznenadio? Pa s čvrstinom u klinču. Znali smo zapravo da će biti čvrst na temelju prošlih borbi i na temelju iskustva koje ima u ovom sportu. Nije on jučer došao trenirati, ali baš me iznenadio s tom čvrstinom. Znao sam da će biti čvrst, ali evo, s time dodatno još iznenadio. U stojici, ajmo reći da sam očekivao da ću pogađati udarce, ali mislim da to sve može još puno, puno bolje, da tu ima još puno potencijala za napredak, svakako. Pa sigurno da ima i jedno čekamo gledati te ponovno u FNC Kavezu. Dame i gospodo, Marin Mikulić!